My name is Omadai. I'm a digital content creator um, and a travel enthusiast. Um, today, I'd like to talk about a topic, obviously, that I, you know, that I care about, which is travel. And I'm joined by um, my friends, you know, Winnie Ryoba and uh, Magunga Williams. They are both uh, uh, digital content creators, and they are also travel, um, you know, enthusiasts as well. Now. When COVID hit, I mean, COVID obviously, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's a pandemic, it created, you know, a, a medical, a medical crisis, but also it created, um, obviously, an economic crisis and also, um, you know, a travel crisis in the sense that, um, you know, people, people couldn't travel, not, um, you know, I mean, not only internationally, but even, um, you know, from a Kenyan context in the sense that, um, Nairobi was on a lockdown, um, you know, Mombasa, Mandela, ITC. But now recently, um, on July 15th, um, you know, that changed um, as far as local travel is concerned. On August 1st also, um, you know, that will change internationally. Flights will be able to, you know, come in, you know, and out of Kenya. So um, when, when, you know, when flights were, well, well, rather, when when um, local flight uh, resumed, um, Magunga, Winnie, and I had the pleasure, um, you know, of being on the first flight. Um, to uh, Magunga went to Mombasa, uh, and Winnie and I went to you know Winnie and I went to Kisumu, um, obviously courtesy of um, you know Jumbo Jet, and. The conversation that you know that that I that I definitely want us to have is you know I mean obviously our experience um, you know with travel and our ideas of you know you know basically like you know I mean how how is travel going to be like um, you know I mean not only um, not only now um, you know but after you know after, especially if you think about what does um, you know, what has happened, all the hygiene measures, ETC, you have to wear a mask, ETC. So, I mean, you know, I definitely, you know, like to start with me, like, what, I mean, what, what was your, what was your first thought, um, you know, when, um, you know, the travel opportunity came through? Like, what, I mean, what, what, what was the first, what was, what, what, what first went through your mind? Excitement. This is the first time I have stayed for months without moving from place to place. I'm always on the move. So I was excited, but I was also terrified because of the pandemic. And my first instant was to get a face shield to, to, cover, my, <laughs> to cover my face because I, I wasn't not going to go. I really wanted to be on that plane to go and experience Kisumu. Um, what I think is going to happen is unless there is a vaccine or a cure, this is, this is what we experienced during the first flight to Kisumu and him to Mombasa is going to be how it is. There's always going to be social distancing, there's always going to be masks, there's always going to be sanitizers at every spot until they get a cure. And frankly, I think even after we get a cure or a vaccine, hopefully, <laughs> hygiene measures should just remain and yeah yeah and i kind of so one of the things that i've that i've liked about this whole thing is that um a lot more people are washing their hands so i think so i think that's i mean obviously that's an amazing thing in terms of like personal hygiene but like you know magunga like how you know i mean um at the airport so you you know the taxi has you know you know, um, you know, taking you to the airport, then you have to alight, you know, that queue. I mean, how is that like? Um, uh, listen, first of all, the COVID found me right in the middle of uh, oh, yeah. travel. Like, uh, right in the middle of a trip of Malindi, when this happened in March. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it happened, I mean, it was just our first case was announced again. And you're in Berlin, and it's in Nairobi, right? But then, right there, yeah, it became everyone in the hotel. We were staying at the Turtle Bay Hotel, and right then it became like the mood just changed. People 
now we are still like far away from one another. We were going to swimming, but now you know you even scared. <laughs> and then just one case. Yeah. So that we finish our trip, and I'm glad that I did because um, at that time there were no places around the Chapel and Uji area. I had the urge to like cut it short, but then I'm glad I finished because now after that it was three months of no travel. Now, for the accountants watching this, three months without traveling for us is a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yes. There are people who yeah. will go like, for some you stay in the room three months and you want to start crying. Listen, for us, three months, that's true. It's a pretty long time without travel. That's true. Um, I think that's that's the longest I have still without travel since for for quite a while. So when we were told, okay, now the skies are open back for domestic flights, yeah. you know, it, it becomes it's tricky, right? It's not it's not something that you, you you're going to just get up and go. You start asking yourself questions, right? Because we've had. Uh, and the toll was, you know, growing, the numbers of people being confirmed with cases growing, and then the skies are open. And you don't know how other people behave, or how other people take these measures seriously. But then we decided to go, because now this is what we do, right? We, we go, uh, we were going back to work for us, and we, we travel for work, we tell people, what's happening, how things are, what the situation is like. The best that parts. people will rely on us for this kind of information. And yes, it was risky for us to go, but we did anyway. So right at the airport, yeah. you are told to alight. Uh, my flight was at 6.50, and because I knew the COVID regulations were going to like um, delay things, longer queues, Lower local queues and everything. I wanted to go early, so I went there early. And it was early in the morning. You get to the airport, of course, you have to alight to go through the security thing, but you are told to wash your hands. And the water is cold. <laughs> it's like six seven. It's so cold. It's really cold. I remember, yeah. Man, it's colder than hearts in Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? My friend. I didn't have to wash your hands. At that time, I think there are people who work at the airport or people who want to travel. Yeah. So city hopper, right? Yeah. And because the, the guys usually come with like city hopper and other public uh, modes of transport, they always have to rush to get through security. Yeah, I think I think but they they work you are rushing to get through security. Yeah. They put those stands for one meter, those signs for one meter apart. Mm. I'm standing on my spot, and you are taking that one meter to mean that me, I want you to pass through. Uh, no, go. Go back. I'm also in a hurry, I also have to apply to that. You know, you have to go back. And of course, now you, you get in, there are all these things social distance for one meter. Is it one or one point five meter? You go to the trays, they've written there, they've signed that the trays, the airport says that. But, Here's where the, the rub is. The written the sun test the trees. I've seen more people go through, yeah. but I've not seen them do the sun test. Unfortunately for COVID, you just need one person to touch a tree, and then you will also touch it, right? And then you're exposed. That is, that is the sad reality, that I, I didn't see the trees being sanitized. And do you think? Do you think? Do you think? Like for instance, I mean, that would that was a very very fast day, you know. Do you think, for instance, you know, I mean, some of these things it's going to be easier, f you know, f not only for travelers but also for you know, airport staff, um, airline staff to be able to, you know, um, you know, enforce, you know, some of these like I don't know, um, hygiene standards. For, I know how this sounds, but we live in Kenya. So, while they might have been eager to do these things when the skies were open and everything, what I'm scared of is sustainability. Are they going to keep up with the measures that they had started? Are they going to ensure that people are... I don't know why it is so difficult for a Kenyan to stand 1.5 meters away from you. I don't know what that art is to just 
stand right next to your ass. I don't know where that. I don't know what what, what that is like. We are in a global pandemic. You stay away from me. You know, I would prefer you like just stay. So I don't know if Kenyans are gonna keep up with the measures, putting on a mask twenty four seven that you are. I, I kept my mask on. Yeah. The moment I left the house into the cab. By the way, just the other thing. You have to get into a cab to get to the airport. Yeah. And you don't know where the cab has been. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So for me it was I had my pocket sanitizer. Yeah. So every time I went through, I don't know because I'm not sure if the airport is sanitizing. So every time I go through somewhere, I have to sanitize my hands. So I'm not relying on the government or on the public institutions to do their job. Mm. I'm just going to rely on myself. I mean, I, I mean that, that's true um, uh, for very many reasons. Because if you think about it, you remember, you know, when you were, when you were um, on the plane, you're being told that you can't, um, you can't remove your mask. And obviously now, I mean, they, they, um, they sanitize you as you're getting in, but then you still have to touch the belt, ETC. Mm -hmm. so, in, so in essence, in terms of like protecting yourself, is, you know, it's really about, you know, obviously don't touch your face with, with, with um, you know, dirty hands. Um, and obviously if you touch, you know, anything, you know, sanitize, 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 sanitize. So anyway, really, so like, your, you know, jumbo jet, you've landed in Kisumu, um, you know, and, you know, now you're walking around, you know, try, you know, <clears throat> you know, um, you're traveling, you're, you're visiting places. How was that like? Oh, we were in Kisumu for five days. The first day we didn't do much. We just went to the supermarket, I'm shopped for... I'm talking as if I wasn't that, so then... <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. yeah, I went to the supermarket, shopped for groceries, and then um, we went to the A&D. Every single place we went to, the sanitizing, masks, social distancing, which is fine. Um, but we noticed, I, I think it's because we got to Kisumu earlier. We were the first tourists. So um, most places were not opened. Places that we, we expected to explore, Dunga Beach, actually most resorts were not open. And the ones that were open were almost empty. Actually, most of them were empty. So um, maybe it will improve in the future, but the situation as per now is that things to do are limited in Kisumu. I'm not so sure about Mombasa, but Kisumu, it was like that. Another thing that I'd like to talk about is the social distancing that George spoke about. Um, before they opened up the skies, they said that um, because it will not be sustainable for seats to be, you know, one person per, per seat. Obviously, when we, we traveled with Jumbo Jet, they were half empty, again, because we were the first, first time visitors. But I'm looking at other airlines. My friends in other countries are traveling, and people are not social distancing in planes. So, I mean, it beats the logic of, it helps to social distance in airports, but then when you get into the plane, there's no social distancing. Of course, it's not viable. People need to make money. It's business. So I, I think it beats the logic. I'm not sure what you think about it. I mean, I don't know. listen, I, so that's, that was my biggest worry at also. And of course, I called ahead and was like, what is it like inside of it? And that was also a question that people were asking. Because, and you know you can't lie, right? Because yeah. people, people would rely on us for travel stories and experiences, yeah. right? Yeah. And just, of course, other than just credibility, as a person, it would be very unkind to, to lie to people about what the situation for travel is. So when we were traveling, and I think even for now, the plays are not yet full. Yeah. Because there's still that stigma around travel, which is very understandable, right? People are scared of travel. But what is the point of like social distancing, sanitizing, and everything? Just to sit next to someone you don't know, someone even if you do it, like sitting next to someone who is potentially exposed. Because right now we're working on the assumption that they don't get right? They sit, Uko, you're looking, no, I'm sitting on my window seat and Constantly just standing outside with the clouds, you know, with my mask on. Luckily for me, the, the plane wasn't full, and right now, many planes are empty. So, 
you can just ask to be transferred to like places where and I think they should do that. When the plane is not full, mm. if it is if you guys are flying up, um ask your stewards and uh, air spaces and, and pilots and air spaces to tell people to feel free to separate as much as possible. Yeah. It's the most responsible thing you can do. Um, even as you're trying to predict it as a company. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean that's... Yeah. So, <clears throat> and, so just like you said, in Mombasa, <laughs> I arrived in Mombasa, mm. I checked into City Blue, mm. and when I walked in, I was the, literally the only person in that entire hotel. I'm the only person who is checking into that hotel. Later on, I think one other person came in. I was there for about three days. In Mombasa, then went to the end. So, in in when we were there, we had three three rooms were taken. There were no nobody is cooking, nobody is cleaning. I mean, there was someone to clean the room, but there was nobody. The, the restaurant wasn't open because it's unsustainable to open an entire kitchen yeah. for just three. Yeah. So we were. I was ordering in, you know, from ordering in. And then when we went to the to the army, uh, the army room was open. But other than the fact that nobody was there, you know, there are some things that you, you should expect not to be the same. Things like service, for instance. Right? There's the normal travel experience of you go somewhere and the service is great, right? But because people have been away for so long, um, many of the staff were laid off, right? There are very few people there. And so people are still just kind of like waking up. You know, it's like you've been sleeping and then now uh, you're waking up and you're groggy and you're slow and you're, you're still haven't picked up on your day. So that's basically now the other experience of now going to like hotels and restaurants. Away from just now the, the health concerns, there's also now the fact that you will not get the same kind of service as you are getting usually. I mean, you take time for it. I mean, that's true, but, but also, um, especially for those people who like privacy, um, you know, if they can overcome their paranoia, don't you think that this is, you know, really, don't you think this is the best time, you know, I mean, for them to travel? Obviously, you know, um, you know, being, you know, they need to be careful, you know, observe all these health protocols, wash your hands and TC, sanitize. But don't you think this is like the, sort of the best time? Yeah, but like Magunga said, we we're traveling for work for now. I think that <clears throat> we're traveling for work, so for us guys, we had to do it. But for now, I feel like it's not, it wouldn't make sense for someone to do it for leisure. You just do it because it's necessary, it's, it's a must, because the cases in Kenya are growing daily. I don't know what way we are in right now, but it's, it's intense and crazy. So I wouldn't think that, because we've seen people talk about how they were they took precautions they sanitized and they still got it but um if you're young and you trust your immunity <laughs> and you have the privilege of living alone so that when you travel and come back you'll isolate so that you don't expose people that you love and pe your friends to it then by all means but i wouldn't recommend it for now unless it's necessary that's my thought what yeah, do you think i, I agree i agree um, and so, even, so if, now, now that's, that's the, the thing I was, I was getting to work. So for us to travel for work, <laughs> I go to the and I'm at the beach, I'll take a picture of myself at the beach. But then as I'm at the beach, I'm telling you, hey, travel if you need to, you don't need to come to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> then I start. Because, you know, I, I, I take it as, you know, the hazards of my job required me to, or needed me to travel, you know, and experience these things so that I could come to it. Okay? But now, that was the hazard of my job. The parts of my job was that I could sit by the beach with my wife, right? And enjoy a beautiful sunset or a beautiful day. You know, those white sunny beaches. But as I'm there, I'm posting that picture. It's good to open for this. If you, do, oh, if you don't, right? Have come, to come this way if you need to. Like if you're yeah. coming, if you're coming to see your family, you know, like the the the, 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 the emotional separation between families that has 
COVID has caused. If you need to travel for work, if you need to travel because you need, if you have, if you travel because you need to, yeah. feel free. And this is an option for accommodation that you can have. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. But just for fun times, I I don't know. I mean, if it is privacy that is your concern, there is nothing more private than your house. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So That's don't true. travel for privacy. In fact, nobody travels for privacy. Mm -hmm. The moment you step outside your house, you get into a car, your privacy is yeah. compromised. Go to the airplane, go to a hotel. I mean, yeah. Okay, um, now, uh, international travel, August 1st. Um, you know, travel now, it will be possible to interna for international flights to land here and you can, whoever wants can be able to like travel internationally. Um, I mean, I for one, um, you know, I mean, if I was asked, I, you know, I, I definitely would, would um, you know, wouldn't travel to um, Europe or the Americas, like maybe in the, in the next like three years. Uh, because I'm just, I'm just like totally, I'm just like totally afraid, especially because of what, you know, we've seen how the, I mean, this pandemic has ravaged, you know, that particular space. Um, but if you could, you know, I mean, if you could, if you could be able to travel, you know, if you could be able to travel after, um, especially now we're talking about work, you know, I mean, if you could get an opportunity, um, I mean, where would you go after August 1st? So, um, you see, the thing is, it's, it's tricky. I wouldn't, I'm not really keen on traveling internationally at the moment. Um, because you don't know what the country really is like. Yeah. You don't know if this is the kind of country where numbers are high and genuinely high, or if this is the kind of country that is downplaying their numbers, and then, you know, you, you don't know where you're going. And uh, granted, in Kenya, you, you, you should also have those concerns. But now, having to deal with, imagine being in another country and then now you are diagnosed with, or you get sick for like symptoms and everything, becomes much more complicated. I know when my knees are open, I have family that's outside, that's, that wants to come back home, <coughs> right? I know that one. What I'm, what I'm worried for is, these guys are opening the borders. Flights are supposed to fly to come in. I'm wondering, are cabs essential service providers? Because you are an international traveler and it is past nine, how do you to get there? Are you now supposed to drive? Are you, okay, now I understand. So if your flight is at 10 or even at 2, go before 9. What if you land at, at 11? Are you supposed to stay at the airport until 4? Especially those flights. Are oh, what if your states. flight is at midnight? Yeah. If your flight is at midnight, you go there by night. Okay. Right? But if, if you land at midnight, or you land at, at 10, or even at 9.30, yeah. or 9.15, yeah. well, how are you supposed to get to like your hotel or your house? Because taxis are not... Are there some taxis that are going to be allowed to run? And uh, which ones are they? Yeah. Because these people think opening the, 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 the borders and opening the skies is just about the air, airplane coming in. It's not just that. It's about hotels being available for check-in. Mm -hmm. It's about transport. It's the whole ecosystem that is supposed to be open. Right? True. And yes, the other thing is, these people who are coming in, is there restrictions on which particular places people are not allowed to come in? Because if you can remember, when there was this COVID scare that had just come out. And at that time, Wuhan was Wuhan, yeah? <laughs> yeah and we were still allowed to fly from China, you get? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not about being, I don't know, uh, discriminatory or anything, but there are particular places where we should not allow flights to come in for, regardless of opening the sky. Or if there are People coming in from that place, we put in measures such as mandatory quarantine that is actually being monitored at that time. Otherwise, we are just opening ourselves to much more disaster. I tend to agree, especially if you think about, um, you know, I've, uh, I've seen a few articles on, uh, I mean, where this, um, or rather, 
a majority of the people that got this where they came from and it's the US and US and Europe and to be honest we really need to think about when you're opening the skies we really need to think about you know the issue um you know the um the issue of you know quarantining these people they need to be tested etc yeah. because i mean just letting them in is is just um how do i put it we're just recycling we're just recycling an old problem because this we are here because of that so there are countries who say okay for you to come in you mm. need to show proof that you were tested 24 hours before your flight yeah right mm. At least, I mean, it, it's not much because the COVID test is just as relevant as that one second. If I take the tested now and I test negative mm -hmm. before I get to my house, I might have been exposed. True, right? True. True. But it is at least something. Something. Yeah. You know, Kenya has a, now is being one of the countries that is being blacklisted with regards to travel. Mm -hmm. You can't like some uh, was it Dubai that blacklisted Kenya as one of the countries that will not be. Mm -hmm that will not be granted visas to come in. No, you can go to you can go to Dubai from from I think second uh, August. But so, there were so there were this I can't remember the country. It's, country. it's Schengen, the Schengen, Schengen region. Yeah. Schengen region. Yeah. yeah. We're not being allowed to go in. So that's now the other Problem. And yeah. if I may oh. add to what you're saying, sorry to interrupt, <clears throat> when you compare Kenya and Rwanda, the situation, in, of course, maybe assuming they're not lying, but the situation in Rwanda is much better managed than the situation in Kenya. And that is why Rwanda are on that list of sanction. Really? They can go, yeah, they can go, but us guys can go. And I was looking at the restrictions because Rwanda is one of the places I visit often for work. I was looking at their requirements and one of the requirements was 24 hours test before leaving your country of origin and then when you get there you get a test and stay for eight hours was it eight to 16 hours at your own cost to get the results before they let you go kenya is not doing the same and i think we should adopt the same policy yeah Even ethiopia um ethiopia also has um i mean has similar um requirements um, so you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to quarantine. You, okay, you, have, you either have to have the test, but still you go to quarantine. And then if you do not have the test, obviously the quarantine period will be longer. If you, okay, if you've not done the test before travel, quarantine period will be longer. And also it will be at your own cost. So it's just easier to just do, you do the test here and then you quarantine for a few days. You know, once you get there. For me, if, um, you know, I'm, I'm in agreement with the both of you and you're saying there's a huge risk in just opening and not requiring, you know, I mean, all these, you know, I mean, all these passengers, um, it doesn't matter whether they're Kenyan or not, but to just come and then there's, there's, even, there's even, even no protocol. Because, uh, yes, you might be Kenyan and you're supposed to be allowed to come into your country, but mm. you're still supposed to be subject to all these things. Yes. Right? Yes. And so all these complications, international travel has always been difficult. Especially for African countries, we we, we know the story, right? Of course, of course. But now, um, COVID has complicated it even more, mm. and I am I'm I'm, I'm I'm foreseeing a, a situation where even after COVID, even after we get a vaccine and a cure, it's still just going to be much more difficult. Because um, unfortunately, these countries are always looking for a reason to not allow us to. Yeah. While us, for us, it's always open borders, you just come in, yeah. visa on arrival, ni, 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 ni. but for us, now we're going to need the, the tears of a dragon. <laughs> to be able to... <laughs> Actually, this is really, really true, and 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 sort of, um, you know, um, to share the conversation to, um, to, like, airlines, so there's something Emirates had, has done. So Emirates has said that um, if you buy a ticket, um, on Emirates, if you fly with them, uh, regardless of any regardless of any class, and you just happen to get COVID, quarantine costs. It's whatever, on them. It's on them. That was beautiful. I saw that. And I'm like, you know, I mean, obviously not. You know, I'm not. A, no, no. Um, obviously, not many airlines uh, can be able to afford. Um, you know, some. I mean, I mean. You know, you know. I mean, they just don't have. I mean, we we would want them to, but they just don't. They can't be able to afford because it's really really expensive. And if you look at 
you know, they 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 are cap they are they are talking about per person, as in they're willing to pay quarantine costs of 140,000 euros, and I'm like, one person. Yes, people, <laughs> and then, they build a island. Uh, uh, and then when you Man think about is. it, when you yeah. think about it, I'm not saying that it's safer, but the way they're managing the situation in the UAE compared to, say, Kenya. Yeah. I don't even expect it. But, it's, but, it, but, it, but, but think about it like this. You know, some, 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 sometimes, if you... If you think about it, it is it is easier if 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 you're in a if you're in a country that you know that has man that that is rich because I mean those guys those those guys are even doing rapid tests like you know if you want to enter are Dubai they doing like, rapid tests for Emirates alone or for if you want residents? to enter if you want to no as 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 as, as, as now as at now if you want to enter you have to do a test. I'm not about no, he's country. talking about now the situation. Like now we are in Kenya. They're not doing rapid tests. They're not no, randomly it's, coming it's, to it's, us. I mean, the whatever is 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 very low. Dubai, I mean, Dubai is open. Some Emirates are not open. Like like Abu Dhabi is, is not. Open. You know where I'm not going? Mm. Mm. Tanzania. Tanzania. Oh, Crazy. I mean, like because you don't know like what's going. I mean, you don't. They're lying. They're lying. You're, I mean, you're it's just, so cold. Like you're yeah. lying. It's, that 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 cannot be true. That cannot be true. If it is true, then you need to test their blood to see where they're not. How how come they're COVID free? I don't think it's true. <laughs> it's a lie. I don't think they're COVID free. I think they're just obviously they're not. You know they're not testing. And if they if they are testing, um, you know obviously they're not sharing. You know they're not sharing those results. And then something else you need to understand that uh, Tanzan Tanzania um, has has very low levels of media freedom and freedom of expression. That's so true. people they are also in an election year. Oh, oh okay, I'm I'm not I'm, they are I'm in not aware. Year. Yes. Yeah. So also that's also a problem. So the it's it's very it's very hard sometimes to like get um you know to like get independent verification or some of these things. And then I remember a few years back they they, they have this new law that that says that you can't uh, only the government, by law, is mandated to share any statistics. So I can't wake up today and publish, even if it's on a blog, and say, I went to this hospital and I was told 10 people have corona. You can't. Yeah. So, so now that's a problem. So, that's, so that's, Exactly. Uh, I think Burundi is not a place where to be because people are dying of heart attacks. Oh. <laughs> well... Well, well, yeah. So, wow. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's also to travel. Choose your travel wisely. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I mean, you you might go into Tanzania and then you know something happens that you could be written off as a thing, or Burundi, or. I don't think I'm interested in going to the Americas right now because not the Americas but just the United States of America. Specifically. I'm curious yeah. because other than me being a black man, I those those numbers are ridiculous. I have a I have family there and we are constantly just holding our breaths. Yeah. Um I don't know about other places though. You see the thing is that's the thing. Because now if you want to travel right now, you really have to do your research. research about what uh, that COVID places. is doing in that True. particular region mm. before you go. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you know, if anything, China would, China would be a China is the best. The same. China is and the even, best place to be. You, I mean, I, they did, they did, um, af, you know, af, after um, after some time, they went and, and, and did test in Wuhan. They did test, I think, around uh, four, I think within four or five days, they tested 2.9 million people. Yeah. Like I mean, that's like so. I think if I'm going to China, then I am going to the States, going to PZ, going Europe. To... Uh, Europe. Europe opened Europe. up as well, but then they opened up because economy. You, was that was that fake news that I saw Italy saying that it's G, if you come in, they're going to pay for your flight. Oh, there was, there, was, there was like an offer, there was like an article, maybe it might have been fake news, you um, will have to verify that. that but that. you go, I'm like, Italy, are you crazy? <laughs> but you see, the good thing about Europe is most people, I, I tend to think most people have cars, so even if they're traveling from country to country, they're driving themselves, that's a bit safer than using public transport. That's I'm what my friends not, are doing. I'm still not going to Europe, I'm still not going to Italy. 
Yeah. Italy. Italy. Oh, you know what happened in Italy? I'm like, it was just a few yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's better now. It's pain, it's terrible, terrible. But obviously, yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, the thing is, now when people are not flying, and now, now would be the best time to travel, yes. but it's still the most dangerous time to travel. Like this, you know the way what happens when you travel is if you go to a popular site, the thing that you see on, on, your, on, on online and in pictures is not what you're going to see because people are crowded, yeah. people are everywhere. So now that places are not crowded and sites are not crowded, now would have been the best time to travel. Yes. But the risk that you are undertaking is is way too high. It's not worth it. There's also there's also something I was thinking about. Like, um, so you travel around this time, and normally when I travel, I get travel insurance. I, I've tried to ask, but no one is, you know, sort of like confirming whether that travel insurance will cover if, if in case you actually, you know, yeah, contract so, it. No, that's the thing. If insurance companies in Kenya right now are not even covering COVID. No, they are. So I had a very interesting conversation with uh, with 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 Peter Ndwati, um on Twitter. So I just asked, you know, whether insurance companies are, are actually covering COVID. So he clarified that first. An insurance company cannot, um, you know, cannot just pay for a test. They pay for it first for the test. So they only pay for a test if a doctor says this person needs this test. So, so uh, first, second, um, he clarified and said, as far as resolution insurance is concerned, and there were many others, but I want to quote him because I mean, he, he's, he's, the one who, he's the one who said it. So he. He he said that they are indeed cover they are indeed covering um, hospitalization in in private and public hospitals and then also they're also covering home care. The only things you know how what insurance companies do you need you just you just need to be on their li- I mean for you to be able to use a particular insur- insurance um, or rather in a in a hospital they they have they o- they obviously need to be on the panel. That's it. Yeah. So, I mean, some are, but now the travel insurance thing, because people haven't been traveling, I don't think that is something that, that, that you know, that has been talked about. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, travel, travel is going to be, it's going to be weird for a while. Yeah. But mm-hmm. as soon as we get a vaccine or a cure, sure. it will change everything. But as it is, um, a cure, we're looking at 2022. Yeah. Cure vaccine, whatever. We're looking at 2022 because viruses are take long to to understand and everything. So if we've never even tested a vaccine for the common cold, is it the common cold? HIV and HIV is the year for what? 30? Yes, the 80s, yeah. Yeah, so this is going to be this is going to be one of those ones that's going to take a while. But mm-hmm. hopefully, let's hope. Let's let's just hope that. I don't know, something works. If, yeah. if it's that Madagascar juice or what we are hearing is happening at Oxford yeah. or the Russians, yeah. whoever is going to be the first one, yeah. please, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, the good thing about this vaccine is that they won't exclude us. Normally, they would exclude Africa. But, but, this, <laughs> but this thing, if, if they need to fly to Africa, of course, if they fly to Africa, they'll be exposed. So they ah, have yes. to give us the they have to they, give us the cure of the vaccine. They have no choice. They have no choice. Yeah, they have no because choice. Because now they'll have to come and see our, our animals and like right now, you know, they're Investors. dying because the Mara migration is happening and they're not there. <laughs> now, okay, we're in a room of two persons. I have never seen people so passionate about wild <laughs> animals like white people. I have a friend who went to Botswana. I kind of. Uh, national park there, South Africa. It's the same animals, but yeah, even he came to like Kenya to, to TZ. Imagine you're going to Kenya, you go to Masai Mara, you cross over to TZ, and then you go to that. It's it's Masai Mara S- still, Serengeti, Serengeti, but he still went. I've never seen people so obsessed with animals like them. Yeah. But so, yeah. So anyway, I mean, I don't know. I think I think as far as COVID is concerned, COVID, you know, and travel, if you see, I think it's a it's a topic. I think you can talk about it the whole day. But like, what are your last thoughts on you know on this issue, and like, what 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 are you hopeful the future is going to bring? Ah, so for local travel, it's going to open up. Um, even when I'm going to Shad, before I leave, say I counted to Kisumu County, I think we got like three stops. It's just temperature check, really, and to ensure that you're putting on a mask. But 
which is there. And now you can not really. I think it would be a mistake to put us back in a lockdown. Even though people are teasing, teasing that story, the lockdown really messed up people. It's going to be difficult. Um, international travel, I'm not really keen on going outside Kenya right now. If I feel like I need to, if I'm going to work and everything, because you see, unfortunately, COVID has taken away our livelihood. People have been laid off, even just normally just. So if I find myself in a position where I need to travel to work, I might consider travel. And the chances are high that I'm going to take out. I'm just going to take the risk and be as precautious as I can. Yeah. Um, the local, I saw the other day, uh, Najib Balama talking about how to embrace local tourism. I rolled my eyes because it's a it's a debate we've had for so long, but they've always been prioritizing Wazulu for us Kenyans. And so I don't know how the rough manner is handling their. <laughs> They are cancelled. They are cancelled. Right now, they will allow Kenyans to go eat breakfast <laughs> uh, without having to go to the airport. Yeah. You know, um, the local travel scene is currently very. Now is the time where we will have to pull ourselves by the bootstraps, but not because Nigeria like, is just because we love our country. So, me, I will travel and I will always promote domestic tourism because I love this country and I think it has. Beautiful places, but not because Najib Balala says yeah. we should now embrace local tourism. Yeah. Nah. It's just because that's it's a place that I love. Yeah. If someone did a thread on Twitter of uh, why hotels are usually expensive, uh, purchasing power compared to people coming from the United States, Canada, it's they have a higher purchasing power. So when they are told two hundred dollars a night, they're like, really? For this, this is this is cheap, mm -hmm. but for Kenyans it's not, and they they prioritize them. And I came to realize that it's not the hotels; it's really our system, our, the government, the licenses, the levies. These people pay so much money, and they're not in here for charity; they're here for business. Mm -hmm. So I wish our government would see that. But moving on, yes, um, I think it's time for local travel and intra-African tourism to shine. And like he said, the next two years, when talk going to the United States, Europe, Caribbean, it's going to be really difficult. But the good thing about Africa, if our infrastructure was good because you can travel from country to country by road, to be good, to be really good. So I feel I, I'm positive that local and intra-African tourism will shine. Fantastic. Um, you know, thank you, uh, Magunga and Winnie, for the illuminating conversation. And the, the, one of the things I like about um, one of the things I like about fast, um, you know, tourism, especially if you think about it from um, from a Kenyan, um, you know, and an African perspective, is that it is so uh, it is so untapped. There's 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 so much there's so much we can do. Obviously, COVID has really you know, mess things up, but as you can, you know, I mean, hear from, you know, I mean, from this, um, you know, from these two avid travelers, I mean, there's still, you know, there's still an opportunity, and hopefully, I mean, the hope here is that after this, not only are we going to prioritize um, local tourism, we can also try and see how we can, um, you know, get Africans to visit, you know, um, uh, to, obviously, to come visit here, and we can go visit, you know, their countries as well, as a way of, you know, shoring up this industry, and then also as a, you know, as a way of, um, you know, stopping the reliance, um, you know, on 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 foreign on white tourists, and, um, you know, I, it, I mean, every you know everything is up in the air now, uh, but. You know, I have a feeling, especially because um, you know international travel is going to be tricky for a while. I have a, I have a feel, I have a feeling that I think this is a time, um, you know, for local and you know, and African, you know, tourism to shine. So thank you, thank you very much for joining us.
See you next time.